Welcome to all our Collingford Baptist Church family and guests, those gathered in homes and those gathered at church to sing. My name is Daniel. And I'm Courtney. And this week is Nativity and Carols, focusing on the birth of Jesus and some of our favourite carols. So if you'd like, please join together with us now as our Mandarin choir leads us in the song Hark the Herald. That mourns in lonely exile here Until the Son of God appears Oh, come thou rod of Jesse free Your own from Satan's tyranny Of hell, thy people say, and give them victory, a hollow Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Day spring come and cheer. Our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the 
together in lots of different ways this Christmas. Oh, but Emma, where's May? I haven't seen May for a while. What's she been up to? Um, well, I think May had a special job to do, Oliver. I'm sure she'll be here soon. Um, but we should probably let everybody know that the Carol's and Nativity service is going to be a little bit different this year. Oh, oh yeah, everybody. So, uh, because, uh, because of COVID restrictions, we've had to pre-record this service. So, uh, all of the, uh, Bible readings and prayers and, uh, well, the, the, the acting out of the Nativity itself, it's all been pre-recorded instead of coming up on the stage at church. But, uh, we hope that you still enjoy it, uh, lots and lots, because, uh, well, it's Jesus' birthday, everybody! Thanks, Oliver. Oh, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming! Oh, oh, hi, everybody! May, where have you been? We've been doing all the Christmas things without you! Oh, well, Oliver, I've been uh, at church. I've been getting ready to show everybody a, a sneak preview, preview of the uh, Nativity Stations walkthrough event, which is on tomorrow night and Christmas Eve from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. So, uh, everybody, let's uh, check it out now, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hi, Oliver. Hi, everybody at home. Uh, here is a quick sneak preview of uh, the Nativity Stations walkthrough event. Let's get to it. Chad 
。主啊，在圣诞节即将到来的时候，我们要向你感谢。我们感谢你将独生爱子耶稣献给我们，并且为我们的罪死在十字架上，让我们可以因着主耶稣的牺牲，罪得赦免，获得永生。主要我们感谢你。主要我们也为着圣诞节期间教会的各项福音活动向你献上祈求，求主能够让来到教会的众多慕道友能够利用这一次的机会听到福音，也求圣灵在他们心中动工，让他们可以心转向上帝，让他们可以接受这一份宇宙间最好的礼物，接受主耶稣基督作为他们的救主。主要我们也为着我们教会在新的一年发展线上祷告，求主赐合适的牧者来到我们当中，牧养群羊，带领我们教会走在主你所喜悦的道路上，带领我们一起在卡林佛这个地区，或呃弘扬主的福音，让更多的人能够来到教会，听到福音，灵魂得救。这样的祷告是奉主耶稣基督名祈求，阿门。Let us pray. Our Father, we come to you today as we prepare to celebrate Christmas with full and grateful hearts for what you have done for us in sending your perfect only Son into the world as a baby to grow, live, and work amongst us. Lord, so often we lose the real focus of Christmas. As we get caught up with the tinsel, presents, preparations, and hear the music ringing in our ears, telling us that it's the most wonderful time of the year. Yet for so many, it's anything but this. It can be a time of grieving, of disconnection, of hurting, of family rifts, and certainly not a time to look forward to. Lord, the most wonderful and only certain thing. We can find joy in is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus born as a baby in Bethlehem, who brought and continues to bring hope to a hurting and lost world. Jesus, who grew to be an example of how we should live, and who gave His life that we might know forgiveness, love, joy, and peace in its fullest. Jesus, who came to heal the hurting. To reconcile families to each other and to God Himself, Lord, as we experience Christmas this year, may we invite you into our homes, so that the love of Jesus might be evident amongst us, and we may truly know the joy of Christmas. Amen. 기도합시다하나님아버지은혜와사랑을감사합니다성탄절을맞아우리에게성탄의기쁨을누릴수있게하시고그세주를경배할수있게복된은혜를주셔서감사드립니다동방의박,박사들이메시아주님의탄생은간절히기다렸던것처럼오늘이예배모인우리들도주님의임재하시는예배를사모하여맛보기를간절히소망합니다황금과유향과몰약을준비하여헌신하였던동방박동방의박사들처럼우리들도주님앞에우리의모든삶이드리길원합니다날마다우리를새롭게하여주옵시고하나님의수시를도구로사용되기에부족함을어깨인도하여주세요주님코로나때문에전세계가아파가고있습니다많은사람들슬퍼하며힘들어하고있습니다모든사람들에게정말필요한것이바로소망소망되신예수님인줄믿습니다주님주님예수님께서모든사람들을위로하여주시고그들로하여금기쁨과평안이넘치게해주세요교회를위해기도합니다이제모든교회정상을돌아와하나님을예배하며하,하나님의기쁨되는교회가되길원합니다이시간말씀전하실분에게도은혜와평강을평강이넘치게해주시고우리에게필요한말씀전할수있도록인도해주세요예배처음시간과끝시간을온전히받아주,받아주시길원하며살아계신예수님의이름을기도드렸습니다아멘 Now we have an exciting nativity video brought to us by the children and adults of CBC, with a message from Emma to follow.
Take it away, guys. Many people have set out to write accounts about the events that have been fulfilled amongst us. They use the eyewitness reports circulating among us from the early disciples. Having carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I also have decided to write an accurate account for you, Most Honourable Theophilus, so you can be certain of the truth of everything you were taught. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Greetings. The Lord is with you. Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will have a son and name him Jesus. He will be God's son. Trust God and it will happen through the Holy Spirit. There's more news. Your relative Elizabeth is pregnant and going to have a baby too. Even though she is old, God's word never fails. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favoured woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month, for the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. God has blessed you. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever just as he promised our ancestors. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. 
So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. Afraid, he said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped, snuggled in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Well, thanks to everybody who has helped out with our nativity retelling this year. And in December, we have been thinking about this Christmas story and how it connects with our own story. We've been thinking about the uncertainty, God's care, the people who sought God and the wonder that God worked and is working in our lives. Now, those of you who know me well will know that I love stories and those that some might call fairy tales are perhaps my favourites. And this year, with everything that's happened with COVID, it sort of feels a bit like some of those things have come to pass. It feels a little bit like the Grinch has wrapped up our Christmas and gone away with it. Like Ebenezer Scrooge has gotten his way and no one can walk around with a Merry Christmas on their lips. Certainly, we've had some welcome changes but it's not what we had hoped for. And it does feel a little like that white witch has cast a spell where it's always winter, or in our case, summer, and never Christmas. But the thing about fairy tales is that they often echo our own lives and they show us something about that bigger, wider story that we're all in, that God's been weaving throughout our history. And there's this tiny moment of hope at Christmas that is easily overlooked. I mean, sure, there was an angel who appeared a few times and, well, the shepherds were there when a whole choir of angels sang praise to God. But, well, everyone else was asleep in Bethlehem, the world even, but he did come. As a tiny baby, the saviour of the world crept into our stories. God Most High came to live as a helpless infant, came to cry and eat and laugh with us into our tired and broken world full of sickness and poverty, and broken relationships, confusion, boredom, too much work pain and despair. 
God came to live with us, to be part of our story. And now, well, we know what happens next, don't we? We've heard this story so many times before. But those shepherds didn't know. They'd heard that it was the Saviour who'd been born. It was good news for all. But they didn't really know what was going to happen next. And yet what they saw and what they heard was enough. As they left that stable and that manger with the tiny baby there, they were praising God and telling whoever would listen. Well, this year, I'm drawn to a song that Mary sings. I spent a lot of time listening to this song that Mary sang. It's part of the Nativity Stations event, and the words have been echoing through my mind. But there's something about this song, this song of praise and thanksgiving that Mary sings in the midst of this unlikely circumstance. Well, Sure, there's been a miraculous angel visit to both Mary and Elizabeth's husband, Zachariah, and their babies are wonderful miracles. But has Mary really seen the wonders that she's singing about? God's faithfulness to his people, the hungry having food to eat, humble people being placed in power? Mary lives in this tiny little town and her whole country has been overrun by the Romans. And just until recently, it's been 400 years since anybody has last heard anything from God. And Mary doesn't know what's happening next. She doesn't know about this journey that she's going to have to take or another one just a few years later as they flee to Egypt. She doesn't know about the water that's going to be turned into wine or the blind that will see. She doesn't know about that sword that's going to pierce her heart or wonder of wonders, the empty tomb. She doesn't know about how God is going to send his spirit to be with his people. She doesn't know that the good news is good news not just for her people, but for everyone, everywhere. And yet she sings this song. She believes and it's enough for her. I don't know what this year has been like for you. I've heard some stories, but I haven't heard them all. And I know that for some this year has been a little unpleasant and for others, well, it's been like your world has been turned upside down. And like Mary, we haven't really seen these wonders that we sing about at Christmas, but we do have these words, these eyewitness testimonies that we read about in the Bible. And like Mary, we don't know what's coming. We don't know if this vaccine is going to be all it's hoped. We don't know about our new pastors or what's going to happen at work and at school, at home and all the places in between. But we did spend some time just recently giving thanks to God for the work that he is still doing in our worlds, the things that we've noticed, things we're thankful for. We know that God is at work. We don't know what's ahead, but we know what God would do to show that he is Emmanuel, God with us. We know who it is who's in that manger. And we know how far he will go to show that his love never ends and nothing can separate us from him. So this Christmas, let's sing with Mary in whatever way we can. Let's rejoice and celebrate that God has come and that he's still at work in our world. Let's tell the good news and the mercies that are new every morning. Sometimes fairy tales, they speak of a truth that's far greater than any found in the best investigative journalism. Fairy tales remind us that Aslan is on the move and the power of the White Witch cannot keep Father Christmas away from Narnia forever. Old Ebenezer Scrooge, miserable and miserly, well, the ghosts of Christmas, past, present and future are on their way. And the Grinch, who thought he'd stolen Christmas, 
Well, even he pauses for just a moment on the top of Mount Crumpet and listens. And what he hears changes his heart. God is at work. The Saviour has been born. The Word has become flesh and is lying in a manger. The King has come and he's coming back. It's joy to the world, peace on earth. God with us, Emmanuel. Merry Christmas, Carlingford. Let's now respond to God in prayer. Thank you, Father, for the precious gift of your son, Jesus, to save us, to die our death and to give us his righteousness. Please use this special time to bring many people to know you and to renew and strengthen our love for you as our reconciled Father. Please comfort those of us in sickness or in pain at the moment, uh, those with uncertainty or broken relationships, with your peace and comfort. And for those facing poverty and danger here and abroad, please surround them with your love and bring them to trust in you. And for those isolated and unable to be with their families this Christmas, please be near to them. Please be with our government also and those around the world as they make difficult decisions. And we pray that you'll bless them with wisdom and a restful time with their families this Christmas. Amen. Now let's continue singing.
thanks to all our musicians and technicians who've been involved so far. But don't worry everyone, we still have more music to come after a few announcements. Don't forget that on Christmas Day and Sunday the 27th, we will be gathering in homes to worship together. But starting from January the 3rd, anyone who would like to attend in person will be able to register and attend. The third will be a special combined service to welcome you back to meeting in person. If you're interested and haven't yet registered, make sure that you do that as soon as you possibly can. Speaking of services, please join us in praying for the Mandarin Congregation's Christmas Day Outreach Service. This is an exciting opportunity for our church and one to be praying into. Offerings for our Christmas Cambodia appeal are already coming in fast, which is awesome. If you'd like to participate in the appeal or in Baptist World Aid's annual gift cards, check out the bulletin. If, like me, you haven't quite had your fill of Christmas carols, then good, because tonight is Carols in Your Backyard live stream. Get some friends together and continue singing. The link is also in the bulletin. And finally, a reminder that at 3 p.m. today on Zoom, we'll be gathering as a unified church to pray into the Christmas opportunities and in support of our leaders. If you can't find the Zoom link uh, that, that has been emailed out, get in contact with Pastor Dan. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace and on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Amen. The north wind is tossing the leaves, the red dust is over the town, the sparrows are under the eaves, and the grass in the paddock is brown. As we lift up our voices and sing, to the Christ child, the heavenly King. The north wind is tossing the leaves, the red dust is over the town, the sparrows are under the eaves, and the grass in the paddock is brown. As we lift up our voices and sing, to the Christ child, the heavenly King. The tree ferns in green gully sway, the cool stream flows silently by, the joy bells are greeting the day, and the chimes are adrift in the sky. As we lift up our voices and sing To the Christ child, the heavenly King 